All right, good morning, good evening, good night. Welcome into the Nifty Q Show. We're interviewing founders, leaders, and builders in the non-fungible token industry. Today, I'm chatting with Ben Lakoff, co-founder and business lead at Charge Particles. We'll be touching on the best ways DeFi and NFTs can coexist and synergize, fusing utility assets into existing NFTs, product and roadmap updates, and much more. Uh, we had like a whole kind of pre-episode montage there. Hopefully, we can find some of that energy, Ben, uh, here for the episode as you're jet lagged. You know, uh, I'm just going to keep chugging, chugging coffee until that energy comes back. It's cool. Not, not a cold brew guy, as, as you told me as well. So I'll be sipping cold brew in your honor. Yeah, man. I, I just can't do it. You know, I like it's it's part of the part of the ritual in the morning, like the warm liquid like the the smell of a freshly brewed pot of coffee that's what that's my jam i love it man so you mentioned you were a little jet lagged how are you doing in life in general you mentioned like you were in europe so you took a week off from all the nonsense while the the world was imploding here in the nft space (sighs) yeah yeah well i mean yes so took first vacation a long time it was it was a long overdue one of my best buddies got married and I had the honor to be uh, the officiant. So uh, doing the, the honor of marrying him, uh, which was really, really awesome. And uh, actually, yeah, I've got another wedding this weekend. My brother is getting married and I'm officiating his wedding as well. So, you know, I'm moonlighting as an officiant uh, in case this whole crypto thing uh, doesn't work out, I guess. It's, it's a good time to be, to be doing that, man. Uh, really excited to, uh, you know, I think we ran into each other at NFT NYC at the Nifties party, but I was headed out while you were headed in. And I'm excited to, to connect with you one of these days, hopefully at NFT NYC as it, it's coming up here soon. Are you guys headed uh to ny yeah we'll be there um you know what we just need to actually schedule something and like go grab a coffee because you know it's it's madness always um i don't know if you've seen the side of an um, calendar already it's gives me hives just looking at it too much um good thing yeah, man. Too much is always enough. Well, I guess. Let's 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 have that discussion here after the episode for sure, uh, guys. Appreciate you just joining us as we just press live. I want to give a quick shout out to uh, the live chat here: Prodigy, Asmodai, DJ Savage, Hash Rhymes, Alien, River, Seti, Dickens's Seti again uh, is saying, "Hey Ben." So we are just getting started. We're going to talk a lot about charge particles today. You guys are always on the forefront of this merger between DeFi and NFTs, which I think is a little. Uh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? You guys know what NFTs are going to become. And a lot of people look at them just as goblins now. Uh, and you guys look at them in a whole nother light, yeah. which I'm excited to talk about. So um, yeah. I, I want to go just real quick into, this is kind of off the rails, but an example of what you guys were able to do, which was in a community update recently, the Memphis mural. Tell me a, a little bit about yeah. this Memphis mural and what you guys were able to do using charge particles. And then we can get to everything else. Yeah. So, I mean, shout out to the community and Steve and uh, kind of the team for leading this thing because um, I had nothing to do with it. It was a it was a great surprise. It was one of those things that was cooking in the background for some time, obviously. So there's a huge um, there's a building in Memphis uh, and there's a gigantic mural. So it's uh, like 50 foot by 60 foot. Um th- and uh, this mural was turned into an NFT, and there's a hundred thousand dollars deposited inside of it. Um, and the idea is, if you go there, you can get a POAP, and then people with these POAPs can vote on where the interest is sent to. So that hundred K is deposited in the underlying DeFi protocol Ave, so it's earning a little bit of interest. And as that interest accumulates, uh, you can discharge and send that interest to different charities. So it's starting off with uh, St. Jude's um, Research Hospital via the Giving Block. Uh, so they help facilitate you know, converting crypto into fiat. But um, in the future, you can vote on where that interest is given. So this is like one of those cool concepts of having um, the principal stay earning interest into perpetuity and having that interest kind of directed into different wallets, in this case, a charity. Uh, but yeah, super, super freaking cool, tangible example of, uh, you know, this gigantic mural. Oh, it also happens to be an NFT. Oh, it also happens to have a bunch of stable coins 
earning interest, giving money to charity. Uh, so kind of perfectly encapsulates like a lot of the things that we're working on. Yeah, let's. We kind of went there on a reverse fashion, right? Of uh, talking about an example <laughs> before talking about charged particles, but just give the quick, kind of easy example. You know, you guys are doing a lot of cool things with uh, with NFTs being uh, merging with DeFi. Hopefully, I didn't lose you, Ben. You still okay? You're still there. Uh, so, just give the quick elevator pitch there, man, for for charged yeah, particles sure. and to someone that loves that example but wants a little bit better breakdown. Yeah, so without a, a breakdown, that example probably was uh, a, a bit all over the place. So Charge Particles is an NFT protocol that allows you to take your NFT, give it its own smart wallet so it can hold other assets, uh, NFTs or ERC-20 tokens. So fungible or non-fungible um, tokens can be deposited into your NFT. So your NFTs now this basket or this container that holds other assets. So what's happening with the Memphis uh, uh, mural, um, and again, excuse me, I've jet lag, so my brain is a You're little mush. Much. I'm going to be, you know, um, but the uh, Memphis mural, the uh, so it, this is an NFT that is holding fungible tokens, and those fungible tokens are lent out on Aave, which is a DeFi protocol, which is earning interest. So we don't have this magic interest wand that like makes anything that goes into an NFT interest bearing. That's all. That's all Aave. We're just integrated with them, and also with Compound to generate a little interest within that NFT. And that was that was a, a bit of the um, origin story of Charge Particles. So. Um, I mean, our Twitter handle is DeFi NFT that we got in February 2020. So uh, all kudos to Rob Secord. Uh, he's the founder of Charge Particles, and he was dreaming about this in 2019, the idea of having an NFT earning interest and that interest equating to something else. So whether you're directing that to a charity or that equates to more power within a game or more voting weight within a, an ecosystem um, that 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 interest uh, that charge was kind of the core piece of the charge particles uh, that got us really excited so that's uh, the memphis mural is super cool tangible uh, real life example of what could be done yeah and it's in the the art sector as well in, in a, in a in a fashion, right? You, you basically have that mural that contains uh, those assets, but you can also translate that into a game. You can translate that into music. You can translate it into these other industries, which I'm excited to get more examples about, but just retracing and kind of coming back to the foundation of who you are, right? You, I, I looked at your Twitter profile as well before we started this. It said CFA, it said podcaster, what you're all these different things, uh, of course, like in your, in your professional life, Kind of give me a breakdown of who you are, who Ben is on a day-to-day -day basis, other than being the co-founder of, of Charge Particles, man. Yeah. So who am I? Going going deep right off right off the bat, man. I love it. You you knew that I was jet lagged and you're like, I'm gonna take these shots <laughs> now. <laughs> um yeah, so uh my background is in finance. Uh so had my CFA, um, which is a hard thing to get. So um happy for those three little letters, although I don't quite put them in practice these days. So charge particles takes up 80% of my time at this point. We're a, a 13 person team. Uh, so there's a lot of day to day there. Um, in addition, I, I've been doing a ton of angel investing in the uh, crypto space and, and advising. Um, I'm a, a mentor at the Lao, Tachyon and Kernel. And Kernel is where I met Rob and got involved with Charge Particles uh, early days, and um, yeah, and then the podcast that was a that was a COVID project uh, started in 2020, um, and I freaking love it, man! It's great. Like I, I use it more as an access tool. Um, so getting, I mean, I, I, I'm that weirdo that uh, like grew up worshiping investing gods like which is a very weird thing to have uh like role models that are famous investors but uh like for example jim jim rogers he wrote adventure capitalists uh and, and, and he's just he's a really he's old like really big uh investor guy from like 20 30 years ago hmm. and I got to have a podcast with him. So, you know, it's like an hour of sitting down and asking my icon all, all 
what his thoughts on the current macro environment are. So it's a it's a tremendous thing. I mean, you, you obviously love it. You're doing it five days a week these days. So obviously there's something about sitting down and hearing people's stories and, and kind of, you know, I tell people all the time, it's like, you're the star of the show. Come on, tell, tell me whatever, like, gets you super excited. And uh, yeah, we'll have a conversation. Yeah, you have to so, love the podcast, but it's very much like a like a side thing. Uh, that's for sure. Yeah, of course. Well, it's it's tough making it as a content creator, despite what people may think of like people like Mr. Beast or Dr. Disrespect. There's a long tail uh, of which I'm at the, the long tailist. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So t- tell me about. Well, I've never it. tried to like monetize it much, but um, uh, yeah, the thought of actually going out and trying to find sponsors for the podcast at this point, I think like the listenership is there um, and, and, it, it's something I'm going to continue doing like on the side. I actually used it as a, a way to learn more about NFTs when I first was talking with Rob. So I like, I interviewed, I mean, Devin Finzer from OpenSea and Maddie uh, from DCL, DCL yeah. blogger and investor. Um, you know, and, and Jim McNeil from Avastars, like all, all these guys early days to like get my mind around like the, the NFTs are not just JPEGs. Uh, so it was a good way to like kind of broaden my perspective on this topic before I like dove super, super deep into it. Well, the best podcasters are also like inquisitive, like they want to learn something, you know, like that's why Joe Rogan's so popular. It's because he comes through as a guy who just wants to sit down and learn about whatever topic that person wants to do. And I look at some other people that do like content and I'm like, do you really like want to learn from this person? Are you just kind of reading off a a sheet of paper and to uh, these predetermined questions? It's like, that's not it. And so it's cool to see another content creator. Yeah. Although I, I have trouble juggling, uh, listening, consuming podcasts these days because I am such a fan and I also listen to audiobooks. So like the amount of content backlog that I need to listen to on a daily basis is, uh, is kind of absurd. So, um, and I try not to, you know, have a walk all the time with these freaking things in, like just let your mind race. Um, so yeah, that's that's also a struggle because there's a lot of good podcast um, content out there these days. Yeah, you have a lot of knowledge, of course, of this DeFi and NFT integration into you know human life in general. So like content creation is of course like a bigger and bigger part of our lives as like individuals. What ways do you see like NFTs getting involved in like the YouTube that we're sitting on right now or different content creators? Have you thought about that? Have you done any shower thoughts about NFTs for content creators? Yeah, I mean, I think like like just going back to the basics on NFTs, right? It's a it's a way to have this infinitely replicable content, provably unique. So um, for content creators, I think Adam Levy of Mint does a good job of like selling NFTs for sponsorship for each season. So that's like one example, obviously, but like each episode could be an NFT and your biggest fans could own those. And like, you're still sharing this across all of the web two platforms that you do, but they have that ability to truly own it. Um, And then with charge particles, obviously I kind of like use that to scope creep all of these initial ideas. And it's like, okay, so if you have a social, like, where are we going in the next 10 years? Yeah, there's going to be a lot more social tokens and NFTs and blending. But like, so you have this this episode NFT from your content creator of uh, that you like, uh, and then they launch a, a social token. You can deposit those social tokens in your NFT, time lock it for three years, and that gives you even more voting weight within that content creator's ecosystem. So you want to say, hey, I have something I want to talk about. Look at me. I have three of your episodes. I have a bunch of your um, social tokens that earns me the right to either bring myself on the podcast or delegate my spot to somebody that I know and care about and should be on your show. So it's just like this, you know, everybody talks about it, but like fan engagement on steroids and the ability to like, you know, again, scope creeping with charged particles, but blend this non-fungible and fungible aspects of this tokenized creator economy um, 
can can provide for these new like new business models and engagement ways that um that don't exist yet so yeah really excited probably super super early on a lot of those ideas i <laughs> think that's an understatement of... of course yeah uh, shout yeah, out to yeah. the, the nobles in lad city we have we have a social token here and if you are a noble we have had them on our nft live round table uh if, and have had holders and community members on the the round table if you do hold those tokens so if you want to do that go ahead and, and hop into the noble chat in our discord and, and you can come on to this channel but uh yeah, well, let's move on to to the next topic. I had the question in my mind, and it slipped, of course, as always. Uh, but you're doing DeFi, you're doing NFTs uh, here. Uh, that strikes me as a hard thing to do uh, because just explaining DeFi or just explaining NFTs in singular form uh, is is tough. Talking about the combinations of the two must get like a glazed over look by almost everyone you talk to. How do you go about trying to onboard these people into your your protocol and has that gotten easier as both have gotten adopted more yeah great question um so is it easy no um but like with charge particles we're an nft protocol so eventually i mean in the next few months we'll have an sdk out like the an initial one but the idea of using this as a building block for whatever other ecosystem to to build on top of and build with, you know, we're, we're just a Lego block in like the Lego set to build something truly amazing. So with our DAP, um, it's very much like a proof of concept. It's a freaking sweet proof of concept at this point, because now, you know, we've put a lot of dev hours into it, but like, um, it's not easy for the average person, the, the like customer avatar that's like using this has a good understanding of NFTs, multiple chains, DeFi, all of these things to like actually use it. So, I, I mean, every time I say one of those adjectives, like the, the, the group of customers is just like, it, it goes down <laughs> quite a bit. Um, but like, uh, you know, eventually the idea is that this SDK, this charge particle building block, uh, will be so easy to use that other people can can you know use it and target their own customers and there's new unique ways because we're we're just um, I try not to say hacking because that's a that's a terrible word to use when, whenever there's money involved but like we're kind of hacking together these pieces to show what is possible using the proof of concept DAP that we have that's like you know for all of these things. Um, but even after we're, we're going to eat our own dog food with our own um, SDK and, and we'll stand up these other lighter, simpler apps, uh, dApps uh, targeted toward different segments, uh, you know, because right now our dApp, you can come, you can create your own art, you can fill it full of an NFT that's earning interest, um, all of these things, which is like, that's a very specific use case. It's probably like a tinkerer. But uh, we also have a use case of like vesting capsules or DAO capsules. So the idea of, or, or like an OTC swap. So um, I want to sell you a bunch of charge particles, governance tokens. I put those into a NFT and then I time lock it for a year and I sell you that in a completely trustless way. You, you don't have to, you know, the, the contracts are battle tested. We've had $50 million locked in them. Um, you don't have to trust that I'll, I'll send them every month, you know, like a, like a normal, like a, like a, just a disperse app or that the contract that I'm giving you is, is audible or that, you know, the site that the portal goes down or, or whatever. Um, so you have that, that it reassurance third party. That, that, yeah, exactly. So it's like, those are two very different use cases and very different customer segments. And we're funneling those all to the same DAP right now. Um, so yeah, that's very difficult. Right. And it's like a, it's like a customer journey disaster of like, well, we need to build it for this guy that's looking for this. And also this guy and also this game well, developer, like yeah. we've got these games going on with our gaming guilds. Right. Like, and, and like, um, so you have these different gaming assets being filled with other tokens that give them different powers within the game, uh, gameplay. So it's like, all those use cases are being fulfilled by this one dap right now um very difficult 
So what's the so strategy? To answer your question, yeah. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's the strategy here? Because at the same token, you in token, I say as a pun, of, of course, uh, no pun yeah, intended. Yeah. Actually, you have a mural sitting in Memphis, and you could walk up to somebody and be like, "There's actual money in that mural, by the way." And it, it's it's I lo- I knew that we were going to have an awesome discussion because it's just a rabbit hole of a discussion, but it's it's tough to stay on track with. Hey, we could do everything. Let's focus on a couple of these things. Vesting capsules is a, is a cool idea. It sounds like maybe you had a little bit to do with that, uh, with your uh, history of, of loving a venture capital in that sense. But what's the strategy? What's the, what's the end game? Where do you see maybe having that, that app that's gets adopted in full, you know, like gets adopted by 10,000 or 20,000 people, uh, or a hundred thousand at that. Yeah. Great question. I mean, at, so we're kind of going a reverse like Eric Reese lean startup sort of method of like um, build, measure, learn. But like the idea is using this DAP as the way to get these initial use cases and try them out as like an MVP for all of these different things. You know, we can do all of these things all fulfilled by this one DAP. So it's like, we'll test them out until we see which ones make the most have the most traction and we have a decent idea on a number of these things but as soon as we have this sdk that we can like pull out and then silo in on those individual verticals that's when we can like really start doubling down and like okay so this this is a different customer segment this is like we need a new project manager just for this and define the customer very very clearly and have a go to market just for that um but we've been at this like throw everything at the wall, knowing that, you know, the end result is this SDK that other people can start building on top of. Because, I mean, that's, that's the goal with like this open source software movement is um, even though we have a bunch of intelligent minds on our team and in our community, um, there's a lot more the people out there and a lot smarter people out there that like if you, if you give them these billing blocks and give them this inspiration and these ideas there'll be a bunch of really really cool things that will come out that that would never be thought up dreamt up out of our own little echo chamber of us ideating and throwing things at the wall you know yeah no i totally get it, 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 it you find yourself in a dilemma almost because you're trying to be first right it, it pays to be first in laying this foundation but you're laying it before the people are here you know, and it's it's in a in a way. When I say people, I mean like the millions of people that will eventually come into the industry. At which point, you would have had built out all these use cases. It's just we're in that timeline before this happens. So yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I do have a, a a quick question from the chat. Easy and crypto. Shout out to uh, one of the best hey, creators up, in, in, in Lad City here. Nice uh, question. How's the new V4 Ionics staking going on the new spot? Yeah. Good question. So um, we previously always hosted our own staking. Um, so single side and, and LP staking on our own website. No, he's got to be back. You don't want he's Oh, no. Oh, no, you're back. Oh, no. You're back. I'm you're back. Here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Do you you still see me? So you were like, "What the heck's I going on?" Heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw your face go like that. So I thought that was a negative reaction to me saying, "No, Geyser. no, go ahead." It was like one of your mortal enemies that I just mentioned on your channel. Sorry, no, but um, they're they're fantastic. Um, if people haven't looked into them, so it, the idea is that you don't have to um, spend your dev cycles on doing something like single side. And, and um lp tokens so to answer your question easy yes it's going really well um we think we're open to feedback uh, from the community the idea there is that you can easily spin up um liquidity pools on both uh, uh ethereum and polygon all in the same interface and um you're you can encourage longer term stakers so uh, there's like a, a earnings multiplier if you keep it staked for three months um so encouraging kind of those longer term people that are there for it, hey you know i'll stake it for three months like i'm here for years what what difference is one month versus three um so yeah uh overall great experience from me but uh, as always open to feedback from the community but we haven't seen heard any uh, negative 
feedback yet. I love the idea of time locks as a compounding feature for like multipliers in a sense. Like that's, that's, I saw that happen in Alluvium. I think they were implementing that, like the longer you lock it up, the more multiply you get, but that helps at the beginning, of course, uh, when they're trying to get, uh, you know, more people into the protocol, into their game. Uh, I want to get into some examples of this in the gaming sector. You mentioned, you know, some apps are using, or some games are using uh, charged particles uh, to fuse you know, ERC 20s into an NFT asset within the game. I want to get up to all these examples. You guys are in the art sector. If you guys have explored music, I'd love to, to see that as well. I think that's some cool use case you can find there, but I want to take it back in, in reverse again to kind of where you guys have been up to since you founded charge particles, right? Like you guys did this in, I believe 2020, uh, like you guys initially found you were like one of the first projects I remember uh, talking to in the NFT space, it's been two years. How has your evolution been since then? Yeah, man, it's actually crazy. Um, time warp the space as we were talking about began, like before we started recording, right? Like it's so you're on, um, it's actually crazy that like the stock market has opening hours, right. And closes in hindsight, but like also the unintended negative consequence of having something that's 24 seven, 365 is that like, there's somebody online working on something interesting or launching, or there's some something to pay attention to literally every second, every day of, of the year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's crazy that it's been two years, but, um, so we've come a long way. I mean, in, so we launched on mainnet i mean this was a nights and weekends project uh for rob from i mean he was talking about it in late 2019 but like reality early early meaning jan feb 2020 and then i joined him in uh june 2020 and there was like there was a proof of concept at that point right on covan or um Rinker B, one of them on a test net um and it it took us until February of 2021 to actually launch it on uh, mainnet. Uh, so the thing about software development is it never really happens as quickly as it as you want it to or you think it should. And um, well, it depends, right? Like true innovation, zero to one takes a long time. Um, and I'm obviously biased thinking that charge particles was true innovation. But like, obviously, you can uh, copy pasta some uh, Uniswap clone and uh, and be up and running with a new front end on a different chain pretty darn quickly. Mm -hmm. But we opted for the uh, the hard route, I guess. So uh, launched in 2021, February, then shortly thereafter went on Polygon. So the idea of like lower cost way of tinkering around on this. Um, and then uh, we launched our token uh, May end of may 2021 so actually just over a year at this point um and yeah i mean at this point we're 13 people uh we've so leading into kind of what we were talking about with guilds because we do have so many use cases and we are a nft protocol that you know is is applicable across all of these verticals we've segmented into guild um and like guild for people maybe not uh not aware it's a fancy word for a group of people within an organization um but like or uh, like we've it's like each DAO guild almost. kind of has its own yeah i mean it's like a sub dow i guess sub -DAO. within so you have like charge particles umbrella and then you have like the gaming guild with uh appointed kind of heads of that area and using charge particles in different aspects of gaming and one of the guys within gaming and I, I'm not looking at the YouTube chat. So hopefully if anybody's saying stuff, you're, you're relaying those message to me, but I know SETI is in there. Um, but like Cybertooth, uh, cat Chad, he, he's been launching these different games using charge particles, great use case. But again, it's like, it's the hacky way of doing it without the SDK of just using our DAP to actually um, you know, instead of saying, oh, let's wait until the SDK and then I'll hire this whole dev team and I'll build this as a building block to launch this. It's like, 
actually here's the gameplay and we're just going to make it a like not so pleasant customer experience to like play the game using the dap as it's designed but it can still be done uh, it just requires a little bit more friction there's a little bit more friction there uh, in how you do it um, so he, he's been doing a tremendous job there of of utilizing these different pieces um, of taking an NFT, nesting something inside of it, that means something in some sort of battle against somebody else, and then gamifying the use of um, INX, our governance token within there uh, to kind of power up um, in time lock, you know, all of these little building block pieces that are part of the greater charge particles building block. Um, it, it gives you a lot of flexibility within within gaming, especially. So yeah, as soon as we have the SDK, like seeing these these early ideas run into a full-fledged game is uh, something that i'm pretty excited about i think we're all excited for the the i think the play to earn uh quote unquote movement has turned into play and earn so i think play and earn movement uh is definitely one that we're all excited for but there there comes with this idea that we're going to add a DeFi mechanic or a financialization of this game as much as there's a lot of positive you know momentum around that there also is the other hand where some teams fall short in adding a token into a game you know where or they they fall short in adding a token into a pfp project we've seen it multiple times where this merger is not done well you know so what do you what do you make of yeah. like the implementations now right and into the future of like how we can best merge both of these things and I think you guys are offer a great solution. You know, what some of these teams need like almost the software, the sauce of just setting up tokens in their game or something like that. Maybe that's what you guys mm -hmm. can do down the line. But how, how do we best merge DeFi and NFTs or tokens into NFT projects, man? I know that's a large question, but. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a few things there. So first I'll attack the, the gaming one. I think um, gaming is like hot right now and, and play to earn and all of this. Um, but like the reality is a, a real fun game that people want to play and spend time in takes two plus years and like gigantic development teams and game strategists and like all of these other things. So like the reality is, is some PFP project that says they're gonna drop a game with a token like in three months, probably not gonna be that cool. Well, cool um, cats, who knows? Example. You know, Did maybe, this. yeah, <laughs> maybe it's cool. It's got cats, so it's got the internet thing. Um, but no, so I, I think like it's just a matter of timeline before these things don't feel so forced and so bolted on. And like the play to earn is like, I need play to play or I earn to earn. Like, I don't want to play to earn and merge these two. But like, yeah, so it sounds stupid, but it's it's actually it's very cool because it's 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 like it allows us to have this new idea of like i can actually earn something while i'm doing something within the game if i'm doing something in the game that adds value to the game overall yeah it makes sense for them to pay me in some way so there's like there'll be some sort of like incentive mining within the game um but like just click farming uh and earning tokens is not the final form uh, surprise surprise yeah but it was a necessary step to kind of get us to that final form and same with all these like uh, people just bolting on a token within their game like is that the final form no of course not but it's like it's the next necessary prerequisite to kind of get us to that that next next step you have to kind of have this like weird token just bolted on and then you do something else and it doesn't make it it ruins the gameplay but like that was a that was a necessary prerequisite i guess i think that's a great analogy the the bolted on or the piecemeal aspect of what they're doing they're just like essentially like you said just attaching it to what they already have instead of figuring out how can we actually grow this with the roots uh, happening and that that way we get a really good awesome product at the end of this so yeah, I mean, uh, art yeah. sector is another one that I, w I want to attack here. But before we get to uh, other examples uh, that you guys have worked with within the, the art sector specifically, uh, I want to touch on this DeFi piece. 2019, I believe, if I'm getting my timeline correct, was DeFi summer. I'm sure that you had uh, some fun no, days. 2020. Then. 
2020? 2020 was. 2020. Okay. Yeah. Well, just yeah. Forgive me. This but... freaking time warp. Man. Yeah, it is. It is a huge time it's warp. Twenty twenty was COVID, so it just screwed up every everything. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So so do you want to get like a lightning question there? Of what you got involved in in DeFi summer and what where you see DeFi now? Because we've been touching on the NFT side of it, of course. NFT Live. This is Lad City. We cut to cover a lot of NFT stuff, but the idea here is DeFi is going to be a bigger and bigger part of the industry as we go forward. Well, well, let's get some of your DeFi experience here and where you see that today. Yeah. I mean, I'd say in summer 2020, like most uh, people at that time, I guess, I pretty much was like tinkering around with everything. Um, But again, I think in general, like zooming out, um, same concept, same comment about uh, gaming or token bolted on is like this is still very early incentives or early days of all of this right like the the whole there's like a couple different aspects within yield farming and it's like or earning yield within DeFi, and it's like one you're like an lp or liquidity provider on something like uniswap and you're like building up the order book so people can trade back and forth and you're earning a little piece of that so that's like that's one way and then another way is like um, you take a token and you put it into a protocol and they pay you with their token to have it there. And so it's just like a um, incentive, like rewards token. So one of those is a little bit more sustainable than the other. Um, but like when everything kind of shakes out again, it's like it, all of this is necessary to get us to the next the next like as we level up through the progression of of this space will you be able to take out a loan collateralized by some of your assets absolutely will you be able to swap with uh another person absolutely will you be able to have like a decentralized derivative available to um put together structured products and things like that in a decentralized way absolutely but like, there's a lot of fluff and a lot of like uh, pondonomics and a lot of like unsustainable um, high APYs that are basically a marketing expense for that DeFi protocol to incentivize you to get your money there, which basically memes them into existence and in being like a real blue chip project within the space. Um, yeah, that's a long, long-winded way of kind of like where DeFi is today, I guess. I, I love how you mentioned that, that like origination at first, it sounded like it was going to turn into one of the like meme projects, but then you turned it into like, no, actually blue chips today existed and, and originated that way. What, what projects uh, did you get involved to uh, or in, in 2020 uh, and what projects are doing DeFi well today, right? Like you guys are working with Ave. I think they're a great example. I love Stanny and the team from them. Uh, I think I, I want to give a quick shout out to yeah. Avagachi. I think Avagachi is doing a really great job of merging both game and DeFi. So definitely a big shout out to them. But what are some protocols that you got involved in or uh, dApps that you got involved in in the DeFi space that are either doing it well or did it well? Maybe they don't exist. but Man, the ones that I like played around with the most in 2020 probably were just Compound Ave and... Uh like Uniswap, honestly. Um, I mean, there were a bunch of like these full on rug pull DeFi protocols that I like tinkered around with and either lost all my money or, or made a lot. Um, so they probably washed out and I basically forgot all of them. Um, who's doing it well today? Um, not Terra. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Terra. Oh, they will continue to be a part of these episodes going forward, guys. Here we go. Tara, love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, well, I'm sure everybody's talked about it ad nauseum at this point. No, I'd say, um, I mean, the ones that have like a real sustainable um, product and offering. Um, so I still think, I mean, Uniswap had a trillion dollars worth of volume. Like, that's insane. Come on. Um compound ave maker these are still like the blue chips the ones that like have a have a real product that has real use case i mean yeah people are collateralizing just to yield farm uh the rest of their tokens but um 
yeah, I still think that these are doing well and like good examples of, of what can be done well in the space. I'm going to get to some questions here and that'll kind of segue us into uh, the music and the art piece here uh, that we were talking about. Steve-O Spirals is saying the Music Guild and the Ecology Guild are doing some really incredible stuff too. So just touch on some other examples that Charge Particles uh, is offering to different apps or dApps that can uh, can be utilized there, especially in the uh, music and ecology piece. I'm interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, um, yeah. What's up, Steve? I should totally be in that chat. Just tell him, tell him, Hey, from Ben, I guess he can hear me. Um, so, uh, so the, so, so I was actually just backing up. So I, I talked briefly about the gaming guild, but we also have the music guild, the ecology guild, um, yeah, I've got a list of them, charity guild, fashion guild, visual arts, development, collectors guild. So a number of different guilds kind of talking to the breadth of the offerings of what charge particles could do in each of these niches. Um, so with music, um, music NFTs is like the next big thing uh, in small corners of the internet. Um, but one, so, so, I mean, broadly speaking, the music guild is, is, thinking about innovative ways of how charge particles tech or protocol could be used within this convergence of music and NFTs and music NFTs and DeFi. Um, so one, uh, one project is called Unchained Music. Uh, they raised their uh, like pre seed round um, maybe six months ago, but they're doing um, music distribution using um using nft so using charge particles specifically almost for like account management so uh this artist has their own nft with the amount of money like staked within it earning interest and then they can pay that interest to that that artist so they use it kind of as a back-end um account management um process but super cool one of the um one of like the OG community members, uh, big fans of Charge Particles since day one. They, a number of them um, from that team played uh, played at our first launch party. We had one of the biggest parties in the metaverse at the time. Who knows how it holds up now? But um, had live music uh, streamed in uh, from where they were living in China. Like super super cool just to see that that, that arc come back that now their founders, uh, they've raised capital, they're building a project uh, about a passion of theirs, music built on top of charged particles, using it in this new unique way. Um, so it's super, super awesome. Uh, and shout out Mango, these are uh, our, our community manager at the time. Uh, he's now our creative director, but he, these are his friends from back in the day and they've been strong supporters from early days for sure. Yeah, that's a really cool origin story and success story there with the the raise. Uh, I do want to touch on one piece you you hit on before you started that story, which was that music NFTs are the next big thing in a small corner of the internet. Break that down. Uh, tell me why you think or why yeah. you think people well, th uh, believe that this is going to be the next big thing. I mean, you know, I I'd say uh, my family. Um, well, maybe not my family at this point. I might have uh, uh, red pilled them at this point enough, but like m most people don't understand the value. Like most people outside of this small little like uh, ecosystem that we live, work, and play, um, don't understand the value of an NFT. Full stop. Um, and and that's more of like digital art. You know, the very like. Trojan horse tip of the spear of what an NFT is. But then when you say like, well, music can be an NFT or any other digital media, digital media file, like they just don't get it. So like getting somebody across the chasm that an NFT could have value. Yeah. That's one thing, but like a music NFT is another thing. So yeah. I mean, I, I guess if you follow Cooper or a few other people within Twitter, like you'd think, everybody's talking about music nfts but not that many are it's still pretty early days except for that small corner of the internet 
True. Which I happen to frequent in that small yeah. corner. <laughs> I, 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 you, you definitely make your your way around uh, the small corner of, of our ecosystem here, man. Just being in all the different, uh, or being involved in all the different <laughs> sectors, at least within, you know, your little uh, project, right? Like, and I, I say little, but you guys are definitely uh, involved in a lot, man. So tell me a little bit more about what you guys have uh, on the horizon here, like roadmap features. I know you you mentioned on the the vesting uh capsules there that's a really cool feature i uh, would love to see like adoption of that as well uh just for for people who are you know getting into these early stage rounds and things like this that's a really cool idea uh to not have that liquidity hit the market uh and and be able to still uh kind of have value transfer there so any roadmap features you got up uh today yeah. man i would love to hear them. yeah um well so i I didn't speak on the ecology guild. So just oh, yeah. shout out. Um, I've never said his name. It's T E R E X. So I, for some reason I always said T Rex, but it's, uh, it's probably Terex. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he's now our officially our ecology guild leader, but um, using charged particles uh, with one of the OG projects, grandmother Grove, but the idea of like using refi in a new unique way. Uh, or using charged particles within refi or regenerative finance. Um, so that's that's kind of what's going on there. So anybody that's interested in refi, regenerative uh, finance, and, break that and down. Possibly. So yeah, so it's the idea of using DeFi with an aspect of like um, doing good for the the world, right? Like as opposed to just all that capital, like staying within your own pocket, a portion of it to to making the world a better place. So like reforestation and things like this. Yep, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah, no, keep going. I didn't mean to like throw you off there, yeah. but uh, I was just yeah, yeah, no, no. So 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 there's there's um, uh, there's tons of stuff happening within that as well. But uh, just more broadly speaking, you know, all of these guilds, um, there's kind of something for everyone. And again, these are like early days experimentation tinkering around using charge particles as this building block within this vertical within the nft space and then as soon as our sdk comes out you actually have this building block and you're able to take it and build it into a project that, that, that you know simplifies the user experience one but um uses that within your own ecosystem and your own business model um to kind of you outsource that whole aspect to us and our SDK of implementing other DeFi protocols and support for many different tokens or NFTs, all of that kind of comes wrapped into the SDK. So that's probably a good segue into uh, upcoming roadmap. Uh, biggest one would be SDK. That's in the next couple months. Uh, something we've also been talking about for a while now is NFT liquidity mining. So the idea of uh, earning interest within your NFT and actually earning INX, our governance token on top of that, so encouraging people to earn interest in their NFTs. Um, we we have a, a an NFT within our ecosystem that's like a yield boosting NFT. So if you would deposit that and interest bearing assets, you get boosted yield on your INX. Um, so cool way of piecing these things together and the idea is to come out with a almost a template example of how people can use these pieces uh in their own ecosystem so you could encourage people to uh, stake their tokens within their nft earn uh, uh voting weight within that dow buy another nft that um that also gives you more weight um there's a lot of different things you could do there yeah, I want to give a quick shout out uh, one last time to the chat here. Seti is asking, what are the plans to increase the scalability and speed needed for more and more SDK DAP integration? Uh, good question. So I don't know. Um, there is there is one, uh, that's for sure. We've actually just, uh, the, the SDK, I mean, this has been on our roadmap for a while, but in terms of like actually charting out what needs to be done um and when this is this has all been done and uh i just was on vacation last week so i haven't really looked into a lot of it at this point but um the the initial sdk will be will be 
not really scaled for thousands of dApps. Uh, so we'll scale it iteratively as we as we get more and more people using it. Um, but like I said, I mean, we're going to be the first users of uh, the SDK. We're eating our own dog food. So um, the NFT wallet uh, manager will come out as well. That's something else we're working on that's built on top of the SDK. Uh, so we'll be the first users giving ourselves feedback on what could be used. Um, as well as standing up these additional dApps. So, uh, yeah, that's a good question. Hopefully that answers. No, it's awesome, man. I actually appreciate when founders and, and leaders kind of like say, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people like want to just have an answer for everything, but like the good leaders actually like probably yeah. say, I don't know more than you would think. So I actually, I actually love that. I say, I don't know all the time because <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> Uh, Easy and Crypto saying I got a really dope looking part of clone. Is that is that your guys uh is that your guys NFT? Particlon. So Particlon and firstly, thank you, Easy, for your support. So Particlon was a generative drop built on charge particles technology. So uh freaking awesome. The art looked amazing. Uh we worked with a team called Vazi. They're putting on uh, metaverse shows in real life and in the metaverse, the metaverses, um, but like uh, really, really cool stuff. So each Particlon came preloaded with uh, Particlon utility token, so a, a, a ERC-20 token. So it was the first generative drop that every time you hit mint, uh, it actually comes loaded, nested, energized with a utility token. So it's this cool idea of what could be done like on a generative scale um most of these projects are dropping tokens later on in the roadmap what if you drop it from day one what if you have those tokens nested inside what if instead of just a pfp just an nft it comes fully loaded as a charged particle with an nft a, a battle axe inside of it and a utility token like what does that do for your job so this was uh this I mean, charge particles is a protocol to be built on. And this was uh, the first iteration of like what's possible uh, on, on a mass scale generative drop. Uh, so, yeah, I think the art is fire. Um, and, yeah. and super excited that the Particlon team, they've got a bunch of really cool stuff uh, coming up. Actually, NFT NYC, we have an AR scavenger hunt for Particlons. So uh, there's like a three different, four different worlds uh, of Particlons. So like water, fire, uh, and forest, basically. And these water Particlons uh, will be hidden near the water. And each one, we've got a bunch of partners. Uh, each one will be filled with a bunch of goodies. So uh, other NFTs, other tokens, but you'll actually have to go around looking for clues uh, and finding them with your uh, Pixel app. It's the app we've partnered with, but uh, it's full AR experience, so like Pokemon Go. So pretty cool. So if anybody's doing anything at NFT NYC, throwing a party, and you'd like uh, you'd like some of these Particlons dropped at your party, filled with goodies, uh, we'd be happy to collaborate. DMing uh, DMs are always open or charge particles. Or particle, or but, pixel. <laughs> whenever anybody <laughs> mentions <laughs> AR, I, my mind always that's ex immediately where my mind went was Pokemon Go was all the people taking up all the space in one street because that was where like a gym was or or where to find the right poke. That was a crazy movement. That was a crazy crazy time in the in the United States in the world. It's, I'm it, sure. I, I, I mean, so I, we've messaged the NFT NYC founders or uh, uh, event planners, whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, think about this for the conference. You drop an NFT with, uh, and, and this was like Charge Particles idea of virtual geocaching and, and you, same idea as the mural. You put a million dollars of principal in this NFT earning interest. It's earning a couple hundred bucks an hour whoever finds it takes out just the interest and then you rehide it. So it's like, you, you don't yes. lose that principle, right? Like we could hack together from a couple um, partners, probably that sort of money. Um, and 
you're you're just earning that interest whenever you find it. But like somebody like NFT NYC, come on, like we'll drop one of these outside of the 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 event, event yeah. that you want a bunch of people to go to, and then you're yes. driving a bunch of traffic there, and you get a bunch of your sponsors and collaborators there to fill it full. So it's this bundle of goodies, you know, that people can find. Hey. And so what Message, they haven't like gotten any back other to you? projects want to do it like, well, you know, I mean, they what they had 15,000 uh, speaker applicants like they probably barely get through the speaker applicant uh, yeah, uh, that's fair. messages. Uh, so in their defense, you know, I know what a, a disaster inbox looks like. Yeah, that, that that AR piece of not losing the principle either. I, I think is is really a, a really cool example, it's pretty cool. right? Because you can get people at on location yeah. wherever you want without losing, you know. And it doesn't have to be a million dollars. It could be a hundred k. It could be fifty k. You know, you're getting people are getting yeah. free money to go somewhere. So I think it's a cool idea. Yeah, yeah. and you put it on Polygon. It costs a few bucks, like a few cents to claim it, and you get a couple bucks. So like, super cool. It's and, and you could even you know just to scope creep it even more as you you get that interest, it's automatically converted into an NFT uh, gift card that also that that principles invested into Aave. So it's earning interest, but then that gift card could be used at whatever uh, store it's dropped in front of. So it's like you get there, you earn the prize, and then you have a gift card to the store that you want to go in and use. Come on. Five years from now, we're going to look back at some of these interviews and we're going to laugh because it's all going to be implemented, you know, like it's going to be in everyday life that these things exist. But it's like, oh, those guys were were talking about it, you know, back in the day, those dinosaurs yeah. were talking about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. When we all have no hair and all super wrinkled because uh, we've been stressed about this 24-7 market for five more years. Yeah, exactly, man. Uh, I do. I did have one uh, more question here, uh, just in general, right? The, uh, the bear market is kind of upon us right now. We're kind of in the midst of it. Uh, the broader market has been in a in a bear market, you could say, for longer than the NFT space, of course. But ever since this other side dropped, the NFT space has kind of been on a little bit of decline. So, what do you make of the current NFT sentiment? The trends that you're seeing in the broader space. Um. Yeah, so I'm giving I you guess all the hardballs today, man. There's a couple. Of, yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, there, there's a couple ways. Like, yeah, I think it's a bear market. Um, I, I think like uh, ETH and Bitcoin will kind of chop around where they are for a while until we figure out like the macro picture, and then NFTs are kind of a higher beta play on that. So, whatever happens in the regular market, like they're just a higher beta play. So. But, you know, that's maybe for the next year, uh, but like zooming out, like, do we believe that this space will be bigger than it is right now, uh, three, five years from now? Yes, absolutely. Was there a bunch of nonsense that was going on in the space? Look, I mean, look, what are the top five NFT collections right now? They're all freaking goblins or goblin derivatives right that that that's what i missed in on, on my vacation everybody minting goblins at like 0. 0.5 well, and now not everybody like, I, some of us were, were some points. of us maintained yeah. our pride okay but not our wallets. yeah well okay well i i joined your camp just by me not being there <laughs> so i've I, I i you know whatever um but like you know it's it's speculative mania. It's mm -hmm. it's uh it, it's madness. So like eh, yeah, whatever. Chop around and like you have have the people that aren't really that value additive uh, leave, and like these booms and bust cycles uh, are net good for the space. You like have all these people come in and then uh, the bottom falls out and like most of those people leave, but there's still like a net gain for the next one up, and you just you know you extrapolate out and it's a, a, a net gain for the industry like eventually a lot of this nonsense will go away but um yeah so i think this was the the fourth fire that needed to happen to like allow the undergrowth to grow up and revive the forest overall oh i love that cyclical nature that we're in we're in the goblin section of of the uh nft space somebody actually mentioned that uh gift dead was on the nft live roundtable and he said the goblins in and of themselves are a good representation 
of where the space is right now a physical representation of where the space is and i thought that hit perfectly man <laughs> uh, dude i'm in a i'm in a like nft chat group and they it's been called goblin town for like five months because everybody thought we were in a bear market for like five months so the fact that none of us actually launched these goblin projects and we're all in a chat called goblin town for months now is uh kind of frustrating <laughs> you might you might have like a incel you might have somebody who's in that chat group that is the founder of goblin town maybe you know, maybe okay. <laughs> yeah I we're know. going all right yeah. I'm, I'm, we're getting off yeah. the rails here i i did have uh we're running up to the end of the episode as well uh ben you're doing a great job man uh, especially on on jet lag you mentioned particlons having a um like a distribution with the tokens inside them I, I wanted to ask it just from an example that I'd love to see in the future, which is dropping the tokens with the NFTs initially. Did you see an unbundling of those tokens immediately to then be sold? What was, what was the result of this drop? Did people like it? Did you see that unbundling? Like I said, and just kind of give me the, the lowdown. No, I, I'd say like overall, uh, the drop was not as like hyped as we would have liked. Uh, so, no i mean i didn't see a lot of unbundling some but not like full speculative mania like if goblins each had a token in it like you, you would have seen a million dollars of liquidity from day one and like crazy speculative boom and bust right mm -hmm. so more more than likely like a lot of the people that uh bought particles were like core charge particles community that like the utility token will be used for future drops and for future utility within that ecosystem. So it's like, no, why, why pull it out? Like I'm going to use it when it's actually used. Uh, so didn't see a lot of unbundling Saw some, but not as much actually we, yeah. I mean that, the, the whole thing was um, quite a learning experience and, and a great example of like what could be done. We could have done a lot, better uh, on a number of different things uh, but yeah we we learned a lot and i mean charge particles team was supplying the tech um and a, a little bit of more of the legwork than than we would have liked but yeah it, it was uh not a lot of unbundling yet okay but as soon as there's a utility for it i'm excited to see it yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, you, what you just mentioned of just like trying and experimenting with something and seeing the results, you guys are just doing that across your protocol, I feel like. Like that's the the mode that you guys are in, which is why I ask all these questions because I just love to see the results of the case studies you guys are essentially t carrying out on a week-to-week, -week, month month-to-month basis. So, look, this is so the... There, uh, go ahead. There's Goblin Town, there's Goblin Piss and Goblin Town Burgers on OpenSea right now. All right, guys, is, we're, we're, we're out of here, just like the NFT space. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> ben, you did a great job today, man. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate it. We're, we're at that hour timeline uh, here. I actually held you a little bit over. So I want to ask if you have any uh, last, you know, kind of thoughts or, or things on, on Charge Particles. Maybe you can drop some, some social media pieces as well if people want to follow you guys. But any last thoughts before we get out of here? Yeah, sure. No. Well, thanks for having me on again a year later. It's been a long time we'll follow up about nft nyc meet you irl like more than just a hello like an actual uh, coffee or something yeah but um no just would encourage any of the listeners um uh, charge particles is super accessible our discord is kind of where a lot of the action is happening uh that's where all of the guilds are you can find us at DeFi nft is our twitter handle that's probably the easiest all the relevant links will be there uh my personal twitter is at Ben Lakoff, B E N L A K O F F. Uh, on Twitter is probably the easiest there. But uh, ultimately, as we move towards FDK, really looking for developers, uh, builders in the space that think this charge particle Lego building block could add value and uh, make your project exponentially more interesting by having it involved, and would love to chat. Awesome. Guys, Ben Lakoff, co founder of charge particles uh this has been a great conversation on the nifty q show we are done with the interviews this week but we do have nft live tomorrow uh hopefully we can get ben on one of these round tables uh as we come along prodigies in the chat who handles the scheduling so hopefully we can get you on ben that would be sweet to see you part of the group 
Sounds great, man. Appreciate appreciate having me on. All right, y'all. Our vibe, our tribe. We are here every week, live content. I'll see you next time. Uh, DJ Savage tomorrow, NFT Live. Later.